Hello Matrix and welcome to our series of videos on the perfect market. In today's lesson we will be focusing on introducing the perfect market and unpacking some of the characteristics thereof. Let's kick off today's lesson by looking at the definition of a market. A market is a mechanism that brings together buyers and sellers of a good or service. Remember Matrix, another word for buyers is simply demand and another word for sellers is simply supply. So what we are saying here is that where demand and supply intersect, the equilibrium point, price and quantity will be formulated and this is also known as the market mechanism. Furthermore, markets can be divided into two categories. Perfect markets, which we will be discussing extensively, and imperfect markets, of which there are three kinds. Monopolies refer to a situation where you have one supplier of a particular good or service, so for example, ESCOM. Oligopolies refer to a situation when you have a few suppliers of goods and services, so for example, the banking industry, and monopolistic competition, which is where you have many suppliers of the same good or service, so for example, a lawyer or a hairdresser. At this stage, Matrix, I'd like to encourage you to revise your cost and revenue tables and graphs that you covered in grade 11. Please ensure that you are completely familiar with them. So what sets the perfect market apart from the imperfect market? Well, the first defining characteristic is that perfect competition must be present. What is perfect competition, grade 12s? It refers to a situation where no one supplier has any more market influence than their fellow competitors. So what we are in essence saying here is that every single supplier in the perfect market is equally represented and that neither of the suppliers can influence the price of the good or service. There are three examples that I can give you of the perfect market. The first one is the stock exchange where the value of a stock or share is determined through the interaction of demand and supply. The foreign currency market which is also known as the forex market and which you would have covered in term one when you did free floating rates of exchange and you learned that the value of free floating rates of exchange is determined through the interaction of demand and supply and then the last one is the agricultural produce market because there are so many suppliers within this particular market. Let's unpack some of the characteristics of the perfect market. We are not going to go through all the characteristics great walls. Instead, we're just going to be focusing on some of them so that you have a better understanding of perfect markets. The first characteristic that we are going to consider is the nature of the product. In the perfect market, homogeneous goods are sold. Homogeneous goods great walls are ones that are identical in the appearance, packaging, and quality. So if you were going to buy freshly squeezed orange juice, it really would not matter whether you were going to buy it from the tuck shop or spaza shop or pick and pay because the orange juice that you would be purchasing would be identical. In this way, Grade Twelves, the consumer is assured of standardized goods and irrespective of where they've purchased it from, it will be identical. So I am going to put in an H here for homogeneous goods. The next characteristic that we are going to consider is the entrance into and exit from the perfect market. Usually great walls, they are legal, financial or technological barriers that prevent entrance into the market. However, this is not the case in the perfect market. If we were to consider legal barriers such as patents, a patent grade 12 is a grant of protection for an invention. So if the owner owns a patent, it gives them the right to stop someone else from making, using or selling the invention without their permission. Financial barriers on the other hand refer to things like huge startup costs that could prevent suppliers from entering into the market. 
while technological barriers are things like not having access to the necessary technology or expertise and therefore prevent suppliers from entry into the market. So what we can clearly see, Grey Dwarves, is that entry into the market is easy and accessible for both the consumer and the supplier. Similarly, Grey Dwarves, if a supplier wishes to exit the market, there will be so many other suppliers all supplying the same good or service that it will in no way compromise the market. So if, for example, a supplier wanted to retire, by him retiring, it would in no way disrupt the market because there would be so many other suppliers that the consumer could choose from that it will make no difference if that one supplier retires. So I am now going to fill in an E here for easy entry and exit. The next characteristic that we're going to be looking at is the large number of buyers and sellers. In a perfect market, Grey Dwarves, there are many, many suppliers that a consumer can choose from. This empowers the consumer, Grey Dwarves, because it means that they are not locked into buying from one or two or even a few suppliers. Instead, the consumer has numerous suppliers that they can choose from. This brings me to my next point. All the sellers will charge the same price for goods and services. And that is because that price has been formulated through the interaction of demand and supply. So within the perfect market, there are a large number of buyers and sellers neither party has the capacity to influence the market in the individual capacity. So I am now going to put in an L for large number of buyers and sellers. The next characteristic that we're going to consider is the price. An individual producer is considered to be a price taker. Please take note of that term because you're going to be hearing a lot about price takers. A price taker Grey Dwarves is one that has no influence on the market price and instead adopts the price that is determined through the interaction of demand and supply. So if we look at our demand curve and our supply curve and we look at the point of intersection, in other words that equilibrium point, that is where the equilibrium price will be formulated. This price grade 12 is the price that the firm will adopt. So I'm going to put a P here for price. So let's summarize everything that we've looked at in terms of the characteristics. The first characteristic that we considered was the nature of the product and we came to the conclusion that the product is homogenous. A homogenous product simply means that the product is in fact standardized. A standardized product grade 12 means that the product is exactly the same in terms of its appearance, its packaging and its quality. The next characteristic that we considered was easy entry and exit into the market. Easy entry and exit. So we know that it's easy for the firm to enter the market and we know that it's easy for the firm to exit the market as well. The next characteristic that we considered was the large number of buyers and sellers and that neither party has the capacity to influence the market. Large number of buyers and sellers. And then the last one that we looked at was the price. We came to the conclusion that the firm is known as a price taker and a price taker is one who adopts the price as was formulated through the interaction of demand and supply. That's my demand curve, that's my supply curve, that's my equilibrium point and that then will be my equilibrium price that the firm will adopt. Grade 12, you should now be able to define the perfect market and you should be able to discuss some of the characteristics thereof. Thank you very much. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. 
If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from the Answer Series, your key to exam success.